All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get it popping. Welcome to H-Dub's Zoom Room. That's right, Dub Zoom Room in full effect right now. And uh, I want to welcome to Dub Zoom Room, I got my homie, my bro. He's a writer, producer, and a filmmaker. He got it buzzing right now. And uh, he goes by the name of Abdu Dandridge with Pressure Entertainment Films. And uh, I just want to welcome him in the Dub Zoom Room right now. I got to chop it up with my bro. What's up, Abdu? What's up, Doug? How you doing, man? <laughs> hey, man, I'm feeling good, man. I'm feeling good, man. First of all, congratulations on the release of your film. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. So, um, yeah, it's a, um, it was released, uh, the movie is called Pressure. Uh, yeah. It was released uh, August 11th uh, through uh, sub uh, the digital division of Entertainment Studios, Freestyle Releasing. Uh, it's gonna. It's, it's, it was just gonna be all of North American territories, but now, as of today, it's all is globally, uh, digital, internet, uh, cable, and satellite platforms. Yo, yeah. so we're doing. And then uh, you can uh, also access the film uh, through iTunes, Apple TV, um, Vudu, etc. You know, Dish TV and things like that. So it's, it's available now everywhere. You can get it. Uh, it's a great film. We're getting a lot of good reviews. Just seen uh, a really good review on uh, Rotten Tomatoes and uh, iTunes. So we're getting a lot of good reviews. So it's pretty cool. That's what's up. Yeah. Just let the viewers and listeners know what the film is about. All right. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's about a young adolescent, inner city adolescent from New York who learns uh, valuable life lessons from a dream. So, so he, uh, he goes through a lot of uh, trials and tri tribulations, tribulations. Uh, through and through the 80s and then through the 90s. So basically the film kind of just puts you in, in the perspective of how things used to be in the 80s before the crack cocaine era took over in 1985. So so he was caught in the middle of all in, in that he was caught in the middle of that transaction and he had to make you know some life decisions that not just ultimately was going to affect him but also affect his friends and family. So. Right. Okay, yeah, you got a dope but cast for it. Film. It's a conscious film, very conscious. Film. So, um, so I want people to know that it's not it's not your average, you know. Um, I would just say your hood movie. Nothing against that, but this is a different film. This film uh, speaks volume, and um, it's looking to uh, take charge and take the lead in the new narrative and making the right choices. Trust me on that. So that's probably why we got a lot of good responses on it in um, 2018 when I released it in the theaters. Yeah. Uh, I did it at the Linden Boulevard uh, Multiplex Cinema in New York. And um, we got uh, the YMCA, the Boys and Girls Club, you know, several high schools. I mean, they've seen the film and, and um, they invited all the kids. We had 700 kids on opening day. I think like 300. We filled, we packed the theater and whatnot. So, and that was after they seen the film. And even though the film speaks with the vernacular of the streets, and that's just to, you know, just, it's just so the kids can have a, so the film can mirror them in a sense, you know what I mean? Right. And, and they can kind of relate to it. But the vernacular has nothing to do with, with the, with the over, overall mess, the positive conscious uh, message in the film. So I think uh, we did pretty good with that. So That's what's so, up. Yeah. Now people get to check it out globally. So if people in Thailand want to see the film, they can, they can access the film now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we got Philippines, we got Germany. I mean, it's going to, you know, iTunes is going to be that preferred platform, I think, uh, you know, or globally, and uh, I think Amazon and whatnot. But um, we still, I'm still going through that phase right now, but I know as of right now, it's, it's available uh, worldwide. So. All right, that's what's up. You know, just wanted to get you on here so I can congratulate you and also, you know, thank you for letting me be the voice, the trailer of the, uh, the film. <laughs> oh yeah, we had a lot of fun with that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. So I mean, so when we did that, um, your voice was literally heard in the theaters. I remember when we ran the trailers. I mean, that was pretty cool. So yeah. um, now it's the trailers. I mean, I got at least probably thirty different cuts of um, of commentaries and some trailers and whatnot, and your voice is on all. So it's everywhere. <laughs> My man. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> now, now you know what I'm gonna ask next. Now you know <laughs> I, I voiced it. Now I'm trying to be seen in the film. <laughs> right, right. So I gotta pull out a whole laundry list of people who asked me the same <laughs> question. 
But yo, I got you, man. Don't worry about that. Yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll but I, I know I know you get that a lot. You know, when people know, you know, a filmmaker, you know, big as yourself, you know, people want to be like, hey man, they trying to get that look in the movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people, you know, I got, you know, you got family, friends and things like that. And you know, it's pretty cool. And then uh you got people who um that want to audition who 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 probably done some stuff or, or will look will, will try will you know will want to do it right. and whatnot. So I always want to give anybody an opportunity because you just never know. You know what I mean? So I mean the cast in in in, in my film, ultimately uh, most of them um never had anything major, you know, at the at the time when we actually filmed the movie. So um if I can go back and do it again, I wouldn't. I loved everybody on the movie. It couldn't have been done any other way, you know, with the cast members of uh, Damian Lee, um, Andrea Corday, uh, Daniel Molina, um, Sharif Carson, and, um, and James Shippey, and the, uh, the Meek Owens brothers, uh, Chandler, Chayton, and uh, Chauncey. I mean, I, I, I didn't want, I couldn't, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't, I would, I would have it the same way, to be honest. Right. I mean, upscale the production a bit, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but, well, you had no, a dope but, cast. It was, it, Damian it, Lee was really good. So. You had a dope. You got. You had a dope cast. It turned out to be a dope movie. So, you know, just want to congratulate you on that. You know, on the success of Pressure. Keep applying I'm pressure. Trying. Yeah, <laughs> that's what we're trying to do daily. Trust me. And then you know, we dropped the soundtrack at the same time. Um, and you know, you know your boy Watts. Oh um, yeah, P. Watts. Let's see. So um, and we got Mike Hyphen on there, and Mr. Flip, on one of the uh, lead tracks of, yep. of the soundtrack. Uh, called Country Boys. And then we got um, uh, Jamal Cook, Neil Leon. Uh, he did uh, one of the main tracks, actually, Welcome to Fort Greene. So um, that whole soundtrack uh, dropped actually the same day. It was pretty cool under Freestyle uh, Digital uh, Music Group, um, being distributed also under uh, um, Transition Music. Really good people over the Freestyle and Transition. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. I know, of course, we got Kendall Scott. So what we did was, you know, any, you know, of course, any, any, any type of score like this with, the, with this type of film, you know, it, traditionally it'll be a bunch of just hip hop tracks or whatever, right? So what we did, we kind of mixed it up, put a couple of R&B tracks in there and then probably two or three. And then the opening track called Breathe is amazing. You got to listen with your headphones. I'm telling you, it, it'll make you want to just listen to it over and over again. So um, there's a good song. It's an actual score by Kendall Scott. So he did an amazing job. He scored most of the film. He scored the old film, of course. And um, and P. Watts in his camp with Ed Rock and them uh, from Queens, they um, they did an amazing job, you know, putting place in certain tracks in certain areas of the film. So you know, that's what we got. You know, it was, it was a lot of hard work. You know, you got the Extendo Boys too, with Manu Bowl. That's another track too. So it's pretty cool. So. Man, dope movie, dope soundtrack. Pushing. <laughs> so. So yeah, I have going down in the dub Zoom room. Got my yep. bro, writer, director, filmmaker, Abdu yep. Dandridge. Anybody you want to shout out to that you know help the process? Oh yeah. Uh, first of all, my cousin, Glenn Costin. Yep. That dude, I love him to death, man. And um, in the trenches Glenn with Costin. you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what the trench? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't uh, begin to explain, but yeah, that's my ride or die dude, man. So. Um, yeah, so along with the executive producers, such as myself as executive producer, Glenn Costin, um, one of the main uh, executive producers on board. Then we got uh, Kevin Vuong out there, out there in San Francisco. And then we got um, um, Lionel Watson uh, from Brooklyn, uh, my boy. So, um, so yeah, we, uh, we put it together, um, stuck hard together and went through the trenches. Then we got, you know, um, oh, can't, can't forget uh, my uh, associate producers, Rich Williams, uh, really important uh, component in this film, and Marie Strain, and, um, and uh, Jimson Tamana. So uh, those are the, there's a lot of names, that's why. So many things now. I just don't want to forget sure. anybody. I mean, and then my main man, that was my last one. My man, um, George, David George Ellis, my camera guy. Steady Cam, DP, yo. That dude, man, we won an award. He was the he was the guy with me when we won an award out there in South Carolina when we did Grown Man. 
Oh, right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah, because you directed. That's, uh, that's my another ride or die guy. He's like, yo, he's definitely on my next movie. Um, we're going to up it up. Definitely a uh, major budget. So we're doing it different this time. Um, got my whole family going to be on their board, my whole pressure family and whatnot. But um, we're going to lead the pack with crew that I just mentioned. And but definitely David George Ellis. He's an amazing DP. So and we had a lot of fun. We learned a lot together. So it was it was a hard project. You know, coming to Vase Story in New York, you know, trying to capture the essence of the 80s and then the 90s. It was pretty tough, but uh, we got through it. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, you try to do those films. I know they had one uh, one film. Uh, I forgot what film it was. I think it was, um, I think it was Harlem Nights. Yes. And I guess, you know, they showed it where you they had like some outtakes and yes. a cell phone was ringing. <laughs> okay. uh, and I think it, I forgot what year that they did um, uh, uh, Harlem Nights, but he was just like, they, no they, they ain't got no cell phone. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. I was like, wow. But right. you know, I guess it's, it, you know, when you're a producer and a filmmaker and stuff like that, you have to really think about those times and what was going on in that era. Yeah. A lot of continuity and, and things like that. That's that's one of the toughest parts too. So in dealing with you know semi low budget and things like that, right? You know it's pretty tough. And then I got to give a shout out to Dara uh, McFarland. Um, man, she she was amazing because um, there were times you got to remember when we, when you shoot in a film, especially on on that capacity and the budget constraints. Right. So um, we yeah you have to shoot fast. You know what I mean? You have to, you, 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 you can take your time, but you got to shoot pretty fast. You can't kind of stretch it out. So you got to shoot fast as you can. But what happens is you kind you, you can lose moments and elements that will, could really convey the story to the next level. And you can lose those things, you know what I mean? But, you know, with, uh, with a good team and it was managed really well with us, um, she was able to, uh, like literally when it, in the first week we were losing days. And a lot of people wow. in the industry, they understand, you know, they know what that means. It's like we were shooting, 15 to 23 scenes a day. Man. Okay. So, or yes. So it normally you went three to five or whatever, but we were shooting that many scenes and what was happening, we were kind of losing, you know, something we had to put them on a the back burner. So she was, she was, she was pretty, pretty well uh, tuned in to the project with me. So by the time we was done for the day, those scenes were already lined up, you know, for, <laughs> for another day or whatever the case we did. And also the, the new uh, reports that went out already. So she was on board. Like it was, we, we, we managed this very well in the very beginning. So when it happens, when we come across these obstacles, you got to be able to drop and roll and move right. fast accordingly with it. So we was able to do that because of the team that we had. So I'm very appreciative of that as well. Okay. That's what's and up. Al, and Al Karim, uh, he was like the coordinator, Al Karim. Yeah. Another, another amazing dude. So I'm, I'm just appreciative of and. and and Zaire Baptiste, uh, he, he has a pretty good name in the, in the industry with music videos uh, back in the day. So um, these these people are very, and, um, and then we got the lighting guys, you know. Um, um, oh my God. Andrew Wonder. Yeah. Andrew Wonder, amazing dude. So, so yeah, I just, I'm not, I'm not trying to forget anybody, but it's, it's, it was a long list of cast crew members and it's, it was done a pretty long time ago. and. Um, and for it to be on this platform right now and uh, hitting the world stage is, is pretty amazing. So I'm appreciative and grateful. Uh, you know, thank you again to uh, Entertainment Studios and Freestyle Digital Media, of course, uh, because it's, it's being distributed um, through their um, through their division. And um, I'm very grateful of it. And I love the I love the family over there, and we're having fun right now. So that's what's up. Once again, ladies and gentlemen. Live in the Dub Zoom room, I got writer, director, producer, filmmaker of Duke Dandridge, Pressure Entertainment Films. Thank you. Appreciate I, you, man. Yeah, man, you can let everybody know how they can um, follow you on social media so that way they can kind of keep up with what's going on with Pressure Entertainment. Yeah, well, I always forget that. I'm ready to run and forget about that part. <laughs> so, so, um, so it's uh, Pressure Entertainment Films. Um, on on Instagram, you'll see the logo, the digital logo there. Uh, that's me, of course. Abdul Dandridge, you'll know that's me. And if you'll see, you'll see all the content on Instagram and everything else. And then, uh, of course, Pressure Entertainment 
on, on Facebook and things like that. Of course, I'm at Dude Energy, that's me as well. Uh, same thing with uh, LinkedIn, um, YouTube, it's Pressure Movie. So just follow that Pressure, the logo. Uh, they'll see it on Instagram and stuff like that. So just follow that, PressureEntertainment.com. If you have any trouble, all you got to do is go to PressureEntertainment.com. Right there, everything is all right there on the first, on the front page, and you go to Feature Films, it's all laid out. Social media, anything you want to know about me, how to get in touch with me, is right there. PressureEntertainment.com. That's what's up, ladies and gentlemen. Do Danridge, Fresh okay. Entertainment Films. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah, Yo, man. I hope to see you again, man. It's oh yeah, most definitely, man. You know that's why I'm trying to see. You know what? What? What's the next project coming up? I know you can't reveal. Oh. You know, I know you probably already got. <laughs> <That's something. done. laughs> yeah. oh, hey, you know I'm shooting my shot just like back in the <laughs> That's a major project. It's gonna be shot in New York, basically. Um, I don't want to release the title yet. Nah. Uh, we're going to hold off on it, but um, we're in development uh, with it right now, and you know, working out some things um, in all in all corners. So don't want to mention any names and companies or anything like that. But that's what we're doing right now, and um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be my next major project, and I'm looking to take it up to the to the next level. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Waiting for this pandemic thing to be over, and so we can get this thing popping. Yeah. That's what's up. I appreciate you, Abdul. I appreciate your time and much continued success, my brother. You know I'm gonna be, uh, you know, hollering at you. <laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> as soon as this thing is over, I'm gonna come take a trip out there to come see you. Yeah, what's man. Up? That's what's up, man. We can chop it up. All right. You got it, bro. My man, Thanks. Abdul Dandridge. Appreciate you, my bro. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, buddy. Dub best. Zoom Room. Hey, what is it? One hundred three point nine, right? FM, the best station in South Carolina. Age Dub. That's it. Yeah. You can catch me afternoons, 2 to 6 p.m. I'm in here. All right. All right. That's what's up. Thank you, H. All right. You're welcome, my brother. All right. All right. Peace. Listen, think about what I said. If you're sick of struggling, you want to get down and make some real money, I got you. All right? Sometimes dreams can't be duplicated. may be the only hope. Why don't you check on your pops? But don't get disappointed. You really helped mess this death. place up bad. Pressure. Yeah. Yeah. Yo.